Hey everyone, I'm Rick Beato. Today's Everything Music is called Film Scoring, What the Pros Know That You Don't. Step one. That's the first thing they do. Thank you very much. Okay, I'm ready to go. Most films when presented to the film scorer from the director are accompanied by a temp track. A temp track is essentially the movie with a temporary score. And that score can be with a classical piece already put in there. It can be another film composer's piece that they want it to sound like. A temp track could sound like this. Okay, that was King's Row by Eric Korngold. This is an old movie soundtrack that George Lucas could have potentially put on the intro for John Williams to mimic. And so John's listening to it, he says, okay, this is what he wants. He wants a, a fanfare, brass fanfare like this, and I need to mimic that. So the first thing to do, if you can't find the score, is figure it out by ear. You may say to me, Rick, I can't figure that out by ear. That's way too difficult. Well, you need to start with simpler things. So we're gonna actually just start by figuring out some basic chords. Okay, how do you actually go about figuring something out? If your ear is not that developed, there's a few techniques that we're going to use in order to, to find all the notes. I have a cue that I was just listening to in the car from a movie called In the Heart of the Sea by Rohe Banos, I believe his name is, and the cue is called The Story is Told. I just picked three chords right in a row that sound like this. Now, the first thing you have to do is figure out the very first chord. So I'm going to isolate that. Da, da. Now I have to find the first note. I'm going to take a guess. Okay, it's C. Da, da. It's a perfect fifth interval. So I know it's going from C to G there. But really, the first place you want to start is what is the bass note? You want to listen to the bass notes. And I hear this. I can tell it's a minor chord. That should be something that uh, is, is like, you find the quality of the chord first. I'm like, okay, it's a minor chord. And, and I hear those, the, I hear the low C, and then I hear this C. So I'm thinking like, okay, it's, it's probably a C minor. And then I just, I play a C minor, play it down low. That kind of sounds like it right there. My strategy was this, play the root. Okay, I know that note is way down there in that C, that low C, and then it sounds full in the bottom end, so I'm gonna assume maybe it's a spread triad and try that. And put that C at the top of it. Now listen to it. That, that's it identically. So it's C, G, E flat, C, and it goes, and then it adds to D, G to the chord. So right like that, I figured out what the first starting melody note was, find the most obvious note you can hear, find it, and if there's two notes, da, da, sing them, and then say, is it a major or minor chord? I knew it was a minor chord. Okay, so it's probably C minor, and I listened for the bass note, yep. I heard the bass notes as C minor. So I played a C minor down here. Now that's not it, or could it be this? Could be that, but it sounds really full in the bottom end. Usually when it sounds full, a lot of times in string writing, you'll have those spread triads down low. So C, G, E flat. And I put the C there and I listen to it. Oh, that's it identically. You can hear it. And then I add the G there. So the next thing we're going to do is look for the next chord. Bum. I can hear that bass note. Find the bass note. Bum. And I hear a C. Bum. Up to the minor third. E flat. So that's the bass note of the next chord. So it's some type of E flat chord. Most likely if the, if the tune starts in C minor, it's probably going to be an E flat major chord. And I'm just using some theoretical knowledge. Um, so, the next thing I'm going to pick out, I've got this, and I, I know that the goes up to that note A there, and if I just play those two outer notes, I was like, okay, that's a sharp four, so is it possibly a Lydian triad? Or is there a spread triad here? Let's listen to it. I hear that, uh, I hear that G. That sounds like it. 
So I'm just using some common sense. And then, so E flat, B flat, G, A, and then the A resolves up to B flat to make it E flat major again. chord I can hear is moving up another whole step so there's an F in the root so the bass line is dun, 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 dun. and I have to figure out what the melody note is and I hear da I can hear that sus4 on there I can hear it's and once again it's a spread triad sus4 F C B flat. So you've got in the bass the bottom three notes are three spread triads. Beautiful. So C minor spread triad, E flat major spread triad, F sus4 spread triad, which is F B flat and C, but it's F C B flat voice like that. So it goes to this note on the F sus4. Okay, so you have a sus4 sus2 chord. That's called the double suspension, okay? So those will typically, uh, we will call that a 9843 or a, uh, this is 98 because it's the second or 2 1. Second resolves to the root. Okay, second is G resolves to F. Okay. And the four resolves to three. So it's a it's a nine eight four three suspension. That's a very standard thing in, in classical music. When you're learning basic counterpoint rules, you'll find, and you learn suspensions, you'll learn about the 4-3 suspension that you, uh, every, all of you know, and the 9-8 suspension. You put them both together. Really beautiful. That's, there's my cue. Uh, they keep the same number of voices. And then, dear Lydian, So I've used a system to do this. Find the obvious melody line, get that. Da, 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 da. Then move to the bass note, or you can start with the bass note either way. I find the melody, the easiest thing to hear you pick out first, then go to the bass line. Da, 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 da. And then see if there are chord structures that you can actually hear. Is it a minor chord? Is it a major chord? Is it a suspended chord? So you need to know these formulas of basic triads because a lot of the stuff is just going to be that simple. It just sounds complex when you hear it with a full orchestra. So let's take a look at some basic triadic formulas. Okay, here's your basic triad formulas. Most of you know these. Major chord is one, three, five. So in the key of C, it's C, E, G. It's the first, third, and fifth note of the scale. Minor is one flat three five, so in C it'd be C E flat G because you're with a C minor scale, first note, third note, fifth note. Diminished triad is one flat three flat five. Augmented triad is one three sharp five. So augmented and major are related, and minor and diminished are related. Okay. Then you have the sus form. A lot of people don't know about that one. One four and five. So in the key of C it'd be C, then up a fourth to F, then to the fifth is G C F G. And then the Lydian triad in the key of C would be C, the sharp fours, F sharp, and then G is the fifth. Have to know these. Every other chord is pretty much built on these. Now we're going to figure out some actual chords real fast from some film scores. This is a major chord. Well, what major chord is that? You guys know that it's Star Wars. Well, it's B flat major. So there's my, a great example of a major chord. So when you hear that, you should instantly say, that's a major chord, because you have to start building a catalog of sounds, and you have to be able to recognize them away from your instrument. Next we have 
a C minor chord. That's from 2001 A Space Odyssey. It's a Richard Strauss piece called Then Spoke Zarathustra. Next, we have a diminished chord, okay? That chord is... That's an F diminished chord, but spread out over the orchestra and the strings. And you should be able to recognize that that's just a basic diminished triad. I'm only going through triads right now. Okay, so we did major, minor, diminished, and that you might recognize from Star Wars. That's a voicing of a D flat augmented chord. Listen to it. Okay, next we have this. That is a suspended four chord or a sus four chord. That is the third chord in the sequence from Shawshank Redemption. This is a different way. This is Thomas Newman from Lemony Snicket. And that is this. So this is a D Lydian, but he's going, he's starting on, on the D. And then he goes A G sharp. So very different sound than that. So here are some different Lydian sounds. John Williams, more of a linear. Beautiful. That's Thomas Newman. Oh, that's another E flat Lydian chord, but voiced differently. It's with the B flat in the bass, and it's got a second inversion E flat major chord there. So B flat, E flat, G, then A, B flat, E flat, A. There's also a G in there. So it's a huge chord voice in the orchestra. It's a really, really beautiful, beautiful, powerful Lydian voicing that's different from the other one that's very lush and low in the strings with that spread triad in the bass. For some of the chords, when you get into more extended chords that have more notes in them, you need to know your modes. Today we're only going to talk about modes of the major scale, and you need to memorize the formulas. You have Ionian, Dorian, Phrygian, Lydian, Mixolydian, Aeolian, Locrian. Everything here is based off the major scale formula, being one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You want to know where the half steps are in the scales, because they're made up of whole steps and half steps, the modes of the major scale, because that's really where the sound of the scales happen. That's where you start to recognize it. So, in the Ionian mode, there's a st half step here between the third, third and fourth scale degree, and really between the seventh and eighth, the leading tone. So in the key of C, you have E and F and B and C, okay? In the Dorian mode, you have a half step here. These are really crucial to memorize. And you have a half step here between six and seven, okay? That sixth is a really important sound that will give you the Dorian flavor. Phrygian, between one and two, Okay, in between five and six. All of these only have two spots where they have a half step. Lydian, between sharp four and five, and between seven and eight. Okay, we know that Lydian sound is that sharp four sound. Mixolydian, between three and four, like the major scale, but then between six and flat seven. Okay, these are the important notes that give the sound of the mode. Aeolian, between two and three, because it's a minor scale, and between five and flat six. That flat six is the sound of Aeolian. Locrian, between the flat, the one and flat two, and between the four and flat five. Everywhere else are whole steps. These are the things you need to memorize with the formulas in order to know what the sounds are. So let's take a listen to a modal chord progression. Okay, now that is that is a great example of listen to it. Dorian okay okay so instantly I recognize that raise six because I'm looking for those half steps in the mode that, that define the sound of the mode. So you hear this, you hear this, and you hear this. It's a beautiful sound. Da, 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 da. 
da 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 What you need to be able to do is when you hear a chord like this, sing the chord scale. That's the quickest way to figure out what it is. Da 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 da. When I hit that, when I hear that sixth note, and I know it's from there to to the next note is a half step, I know it's the Dorian mode. That raised sixth is what gives you the clue to that. And you can do that just by hearing that chord. Ba, 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 ba. Dorian. Sing the chord scales. That's how you're going to determine what they are instantly. Ba, 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 ba. You don't need to have perfect pitch to be able to do this. If you have a chord like this, it's even more dense. Ba, 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 ba. I hear that sharp four to five. Ba, 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 ba. And I hear that uh, seven to eight. So. I know it's an Elydian scale. That's an A Lydian scale. If I have a chord like this, and I hear that. Da, 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 da. I know that's an Aeolian scale because I've memorized what those scale degrees are. One, two, flat three, four, five, flat six, flat seven. Just need to be able to sing the scale and recognize what you're singing. Now I've done a little fun thing here, going back to the beginning of the video about temp music. I took a couple John Williams and Eric Korngold pieces together just for fun for you, and I merged them together for you to check out. <laughs> That's a little medley I put together. Okay, listen to it again. That's Eric Korngold. John Williams. John Williams. Eric Korngold. Back to John Williams. Now, I actually pitch changed them a couple of those a half step. But when I put them up against each other, you can't really tell the difference from when, when one ends and the other begins. Now you might be saying, oh, John Williams just stole this. I guarantee you that the directors of these, either George Lucas or Steven Spielberg, whoever, Richard Donner that did Superman, had temp music with those exact pieces, whether it was the planets, like I said, or, or the corn gold piece. They had them in there and they already had it in their mind. They wanted to hear something exactly like that. And he gave them what, he, what they wanted. John Williams is arguably the greatest film composer of all time and one of the greatest orchestrators of any time, really. So don't uh, think that, oh, John just steals these things at all. That's not the case. He's doing his job. He's doing exactly what the directors want, what they're looking for, and making these things kind of close to these because that's what they expect. It's almost like having demo-itis, we call it in the production field. People listen to something so many times, they got this temp music on, they can't imagine anything else. So if he doesn't write something really close to it, they're not gonna like it. John built his career, though, on knowing the masters. He really understood all these different composers from all different genres. On composers like Holst and Von Williams and Tchaikovsky and Mahler and Korngold and Alfred Newman, uh, Webern, Schoenberg. He knows when he hears this. He knows what that is. That's Stravinsky, the Rite of Spring, and he knows. John Williams knows that chord instantly. He knows it's E flat seven with G in the bass, right? In uh, first inversion over F flat major or E major. Listen to it. We're gonna be doing more on film scoring, getting into line writing, motif development, 
and electronic music, how to build those Hans Zimmer kind of tracks, how to build those Thomas Newman tracks that use synthesizers and what types of plugins we're gonna use for those. We're gonna be doing more of that in my upcoming film scoring series. That's all for now. Please subscribe here to my Everything Music YouTube channel. And if you're interested in the Beato book, which has all these theories, all the modes, how they work together, and some, some of the other modes that we haven't even talked about yet, the modes of the melodic, minor, harmonic, minor scale, and auxiliary scales, go to rickbeato.com and you can purchase it there. Thanks for watching.